moment you've all been waiting for. Ta-da! The Lening M30E Steadicam, or Camera Stabilizer. I will make that mistake many times throughout this video because Steadicam is Tiffin owned property where everything else is a camera stabilizer. Now, I think a lot of people have been waiting for my review on the Lening M30E stabilizer. And I wanted to take time to actually play with it, get to know it, practice with it, because a lot of people may not understand camera stabilizers. This is not a piece of equipment that you pick up and just go. It's not a gimbal. Most gimbals, that's what their job is, to stabilize you without having to have a whole lot of professional knowledge of how to operate. So you can get some beautiful shots with a gimbal, but you can also get some great shots with a Steadicam. Now this is also not a single user interface, okay? Um, unless you have a camera that's going to do autofocus for you, that would be great. But most of my cameras are not autofocus cameras. They are cinema cameras, which means you have to have a focus puller. There with the intro video that you watched before, some things may be a little bit out of focus, and that's because I got to keep, maintain distance between my subject and my camera as best I can because I don't have anybody pulling focus on this video. Another thing you might see is how out of practice I am with the Steadicam. It should be much more stabilized than I showed in the video. I am not going to tell you that I'm a master Steadicam operator. I'm new. I'm new to the Steadicam. There may be a lot of people out there who are new to the Steadicam, but they don't want to sink $6,000, $20,000, dollars into a Steadicam rig. That's where Lening comes into play. Now, the Lening M30E is known as their light broadcast Steadicam, okay? They have a more pro-line Steadicam out there, but it's gonna be about $5,000. This is a very good practice Steadicam. If you can get good operating this Steadicam, then you can get good operating any Steadicam. There are a few flaws that I don't like. So let's talk about cons first of all. For me personally, I think in the gimbal here, it's just not, it's a little bit too loose for my taste. I think this could be stiffened up a whole lot more, which would help you out as an operator, especially a new one, and you don't have quite that wrist control. So you kind of like start to swervy swervy, and then your frame starts to do a little bit of this. That takes time and practice. You get good at that with this steady cam, you'll get good on any steady cam, okay? Uh, another thing is doing low mode or inverted work. I do wish like you could get rid of the monitor here and maybe you had a little bit more on the stem there to be able to adjust for inverted shots, low level shots, footsteps, things like that. We'll see that in this video here. While I'm still talking, uh, we'll kind of look at that. Another thing is it's only SDI. Mm, I do have the, the old school Blackmagic cameras that do use SDI, but my newer cameras do not. My new Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras, they are HDMI. And so that's going to throw the balance of the weight off a little bit, not be so perfect because I have to run the HDMI cable down and to my HDMI monitor. There may be workarounds with that. So that's, that's kind of a downside is no HDMI input. Uh, but if you're using larger cameras like the Sony FX6 or the Blackmagic Ursa or the RED, you're going to have SDI outputs, which may not affect you. Another big thing, another big con of this is if you're a DSLR operator. This is probably not going to fit your style. 
because you need the weight. You really need the weight to have the arm balance properly. So that's going to be a downside. Now, if you're going to use larger lenses like I am, because the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K is not a heavy camera. But once I put the cage, the rails, the 15 millimeter rails, the mat box, the tilt -a mount box on it, the uh, Zeiss Compact Prime lenses on it, and some glass in front of it, now I'm starting to talk about some weight. Also, V-mount battery operation that you don't see here, but I do have a V-mount battery, and the monitor is all going to add some weight to this rig, which is going to help you stabilize the arm much better than with a lightweight DSLR camera. If you're doing a DSLR, I don't see why you wouldn't just buy a gimbal instead, because gimbals are probably going to cost you less than this. So let's talk about some positives now that we talked about some cons. Um, a positive is one, it is very much like any other camera stabilizer out there where you are able to move the camera back and forward on the sled and also move the camera side to side on the sled. It makes it perfect balance. Uh, another positive is the carbon fiber, which makes it very lightweight. Another positive is the, is, the, is the monitor attachment, so you don't have to deal with the monitor that is your only option. You can change your monitor in and out. And the V-mount battery with the D-tap at the bottom is another positive, so you don't have to run cables up to your camera. Uh, that goes true with the SDI. You have an SDI input on the back here, and then an SDI input on the bottom. That reigns true too. Some other positives about this is the vest, which is fully adjustable. Now, if you're a smaller person, this vest is probably not going to fit you as well as a larger individual. I've had my wife try it out, and it just won't get tight enough to suit her, her body. Uh, but another positive here is going to be the adjustment on the arm. You got full adjustment of your back and forward and side to side. So with these knobs here, you can perfectly balance your arm there and have your steady cam just kind of sit right there without any hands and it should never move. That's a great thing about this. Uh, another Positive, this is another pro, is this thing's only going to cost you like $1,600. Closer to 1700 probably with shipping. That's an incredible deal compared to whatever else is out there. You're talking something in this next stage would probably be the Kame TV has one. Mm. Um, Pro-Aim has one. Uh, and then... Um, uh, Steadicam itself has the Aero versions, which I'm not a super fan of their style of how things are mounted on the bottom here compared to the rails in the way things are mounted here. Um, but those are going to cost you more too. You're looking for the Aero 30, which is about 30 pound maximum limit. That's going to cost you close to $7,000 and the Aero 15, which is only going to have a 15-pound a, um, payload, and that's going to cost you around 3000 This is a 32-pound payload, 16 kilograms, um, which is going to give you much wider range of cameras that you can use on it. it it's recommended between 6 and 16 kilograms, so it's at 12 and and 32 pounds that's going to be much better for your larger cameras like your red and your ursa and a camera like the pocket cinema camera here that i'm adding a whole lot of extra features on to it so all in all for an entry level camera stabilizer that you want to practice with and get really good at steadicam i give this a 10 out of 10 because you can go out there and spend more and be a little bit more stabilized maybe with the gimbal here. Um, 
but you're going to pay extra for that stabilizer. And if you're not making money off of it, hmm, then you're wasting money. If it's really something you want to do is get into operating steady cams and stabilizers, then maybe it's worth it for you to go out and spend $30,000 to get the nicest steady cam out there. And then you can sell yourself as a steady cam operator. But if you're really just trying to do short films and you just want documentaries or anything small like that, and you just need something to get you by, this is a great investment for you and your camera package. Um, and it's a great entry level for you to become a good steady cam operator. I've been pleased with this so far. I don't know what else I could say as a review. Um, yeah, my camera works a little bit shaky and all that, so I need more practice. that's going to come with everybody. Everybody's going to need more practice. Environments change, footsteps change. So I, I look forward to taking this out many more places, maybe in the mountains or something like that, and really, really putting it to the test. I think with all that being said, this is a great steady cam for an entry level steady cam operator. Uh, if you're more of a pro level, you're probably not going to be satisfied with this steady cam. But if you are a very entry level uh, uh, steady cam operator, I think you'll be very pleased with the Lonin design. Also, again, like I said, they have their master uh, stabilizer set. You might be much happier with that. I'll try and get my hands on that, test that out too. Um, but that might be. If you want to step up your game just a little bit, you're going to cost a little bit more money, but it's still going to be cheaper than the glide cam, and it's still going to be on par with a professional steady cam. Not like the glide cam lower level uh, stabilizers, but you know, a little bit higher quality than that, um, but not quite the the new whatever it is GF thirty X or something like that that they came out with. Thanks for watching our channel. I hope you enjoy. Please subscribe, please like, please comment, and we'll see you in the next video.